guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be teaching y'all how to be making um, jam and print cookies. And I love these cookies so much because they're a family favorite. So I'll insert a picture of the recipe right here. I'm just going to list off everything that you're going to need for this recipe. I'll just list off the stuff from this recipe. You're going to need butter, sugar, eggs, vanilla extract, flour, baking soda, salt, and strawberry um, jelly. Like strawberry jam or whatever. So yeah, let's get on with the video. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to take two sticks of butter and put it in the microwave until it is completely softened. You can put it in for however long I'm doing, but it really depends on how strong your microwave is. I'm going to start with 15 seconds on full power and see how that does. Okay, so now I'm going to check on the butter and uh, let's see. Nope, it's not quite squishy enough, so I'm going to put it in for another 15 seconds. But again, just do it as long as you need until your butter is completely softened but not melted <laughs> you don't want it melted and you don't want it hard you want it just right so we're just gonna test this okay see right here you can tell that it's done because it's a little bit melted a tiny bit's good if it's too melted it might make your cookies a little bit thin so now we're just gonna take the butter and we're going to put the butter inside a stand mixer Sorry, this part kind of takes me a little bit to try and get all of the flaps of the paper <laughs> undone. Okay, so there we go. I got it. All right, so now I'm just going to put it on that side. And don't forget to add a paddle attachment. Okay, so this butter's kind of melted, the stick that I'm doing right now, and so it's kind of hard for me to get it off. All right, there we go. And then the paper kind of split in half, so that's why it took me a little bit longer than normal. Okay, so now you're going to take three-fourths of a cup of just white sugar. As you can tell, I showed you one-fourth. Um, you need three-fourths of a cup, so I'm doing three of these one-fourth of a cup measuring cups. Um, they do make three-fourths of a cup measuring cup, but we don't have one, so I had to do three um, of the one-fourths, if that makes sense. <laughs> Okay, so now you're just going to cream together the butter and sugar until it is fully combined, but then as soon as you see that they're like it's getting a lot fluffier, you want it to just run a little bit longer because you really want it to be really fluffy. So just put it on high speed for however long until it's completely fluffy. See, that's really fluffy. It's really good, and you also... <laughs> Um, sorry, I have really bad allergies. <laughs> um, so you also really want to scrape down the sides. It's very important or else you're going to end up having chunks of stuff in your cookies, like either chunks of butter or chunks of flour whenever you do that. So scraping down the sides is very important. Okay, so now you're going to take one yolk, not yolk, just one whole egg. Don't separate the egg whites from the yolk, just one full egg. And now you're going to put it in and you're just going to mix on either medium or high until it's fully incorporated so and it will be a little bit eggy at first but then as soon as you whip it for a little bit it should be um, really fluffy and you will not be able to see like the egg yolks anymore okay all right see so you want to whip it until it's like a light light yellow a light yellow it means that you did it correctly <laughs> So you can tell that it's a little bit yellow, which is perfect. That's what you're looking for. So now you're just going to scrape down the sides again. Okay. All right, now that we're done with that, now you're going to add in one teaspoon of just regular vanilla extract. And you're going to add in um, however much that teaspoon was. I'm pretty sure that I was, yeah, that one full teaspoon. Sorry. Um, so you're going to add in one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Okay. Um, the recipe did call for a vanilla bean where you scrape out the seeds and all of that, but I did not do that. It's just so much easier just to use the vanilla extract. There's really no difference. It'll just still taste like vanilla. So <laughs> if you want to make it really fancy homemade vanilla, you can make it from the bean, but I would just add.
that in vanilla extract and you'll come out with the same flavor. So now we're just going to scrape the sides of the bowl again. <laughs> All right. And you want to make sure to get every nook and cranny. <laughs> All right. So now that we're done with that, you're going to, um, now we're going to set that there and now we're going to work on the dry mixture. So you're just going to take a regular bowl and you're going to use all purpose flour. So that's just regular all purpose flour. And so you're going to take it and you're going to take a one cup measuring cup. Okay. And you're going to, I would recommend using a butter knife because you want it to be completely leveled. Like you want it to be completely leveled. Okay. So you're going to add one. And then you're going to add two and a half cups of flour, all-purpose flour. So, but again, this is very important. You have to make sure that's completely leveled. So if you can't really make it completely level with your finger, I would recommend using the non-sharp side of the butter knife. Okay, so I just did two cups and now I'm doing a half of a cup. So now we're going to take a fourth of a teaspoon of just regular salt. So you're just going to add a fourth of a teaspoon of it. <laughs> Sorry, I keep sniffling. I have such bad allergies right now. <laughs> okay, so now you're just going to add in one fourth of a teaspoon of pure sea salt. And now you're going to add in a fourth of a teaspoon of baking soda. See? I just showed you one fourth of a teaspoon of baking soda. Okay. And now I forgot to set it out, but now you take a whisk and just whisk it up. We have this miniature one, see? And it's now you're just going to mix it around. And it's very important that you use a whisk because it just combines it all together. Um, you don't need to whip it for a long period of time. Just mix it until everything's mixed in. Okay. Now you're going to just dump it all in. With cookies, you have to dump it in sessions, but now you just dump it all in. Put it all in. <laughs> and I kind of spilled a little bit of flour, but that's okay. Okay. So now you're going to turn on the stand mixer on like a medium. You do not want to speed it immediately to high or else the flour is going to go poof everywhere. <laughs> so see, it looks like it's just going to turn out really crumbly mess, but after a few minutes, it's going to turn amazing. Okay, are you ready? And there you go. That's what it's supposed to look like. It looks kind of sticky, but it's really not. So now you really just want to start getting some of the dough off of the paddle attachment and then you're going to remove the paddle attachment and you're going to take the bowl out and set it aside. Okay, but you want to continue scraping everything off. Alright, so now you're just going to take some regular parchment paper and you're going to um, pull out a generous amount. The parchment paper did not really like me today. It was really hard to rule out. Okay, so now you're just going to take a pretty decent size of parchment paper and then you're going to put the dough on top of it. Okay, so now you're going to take the dough and just put it all on top of the parchment paper. And now I'm just going to use my finger and wipe off all that dough. You do not want to waste that because that's probably a whole two cookies right there. <laughs> okay, so now I went back to just scrape the rest of the dough off of the bowl because there are still a lot left in it see <laughs> okay so now you're gonna get another piece of parchment paper and as you can tell I was struggling <laughs> I was struggling a lot <laughs> trying to get that stupid piece of parchment paper okay <laughs> I tried to cut it but then it kind of like slid and so I ended up just using my hands in that clip, my mom was just like, do you need some help? And I'm like, no, I think I've got it. So I just ended up ripping it with my hands. Okay, so now you're just going to pat it down. And you want it to be a half an inch thick, whatever that means. That's what the recipe said, but I'm not going to do that. Um, you can use a ruler, but in this scene, I thought that it would work. But it kind of just, the rolling pin kind of just sunk or sank. I don't really know which one. Into the dough. And so it didn't really do much help so I would not waste your time with that just use your hands see in this clip I realized you know what I think I'm just gonna use my hands I have not made these cookies in a while so I didn't remember that I didn't use a rolling pin so so you just really press it down 
um, but you do not want to press it down too thick or else because you do not want it to be too thin or else the jelly is going to seep through and it's not going to be a really good jelly cookie. Um, so you really want to make sure that it's still pretty thick. So now you're just going to tuck, sorry, tuck the inside. The, <laughs> I cannot talk today. Now you're just going to tuck the sides of the parchment paper under the dough. Okay, just like that. Okay, so now you're going to put it in the refrigerator. Make sure that's in the refrigerator or and not the freezer. You do not want to put it in the freezer. You have to put it in the fridge. Okay, see? So I just put it in the refrigerator, just like that. Okay, so now you're going to set your timer for an hour. Well, first you're going to bake the... Sorry, you're going to preheat the oven for 350. Um, so you're going to bake it for 350. Preheat the oven. And then you're going to take your dough out. And you want to set the timer for an hour. So after an hour of the dough in the fridge, it was kind of cold and it's kind of tough. But definitely it's going to loosen up a lot. And you want to really do this um, part pretty quickly because it starts to get kind of melted, kind of. Not really melted, it just it starts getting really, really sticky the more you work with it and the more you play with it and stuff like that. So you do not want to do like that. You do not want to just um, knead the dough. Do not knead that cookie dough. Leave it as it is. You just peel off the parchment paper. And as y'all saw, I put a silicone mat onto a cookie sheet. So now I'm taking a glass cup just to use it, just to cut out like a circular cookie. See? See, it's pretty thick, and that's exactly what you want. So you're supposed to use a circular cookie cutter, um, but we did not have any, so I decided to just use a cup. And as you can tell in this part, the cookie was kind of stuck, and so... Um, I just went and grabbed a butter knife, and you can use that just to get the edge out. See? And there we go. We got the cookie out. <laughs> okay, so now I just pat it down a little bit, but you can still tell that they're pretty thick, and that's exactly what you want, or else the jelly, once you put it in there and bake it, it's going to seep through, and you'll have, like, no jelly inside the cookie. So, yeah. So you really want to make sure that they're pretty thick. See? <laughs> All right, there we go. So now you're just going to keep cutting them out as much as you can, and you're going to put it on the cookie sheet. Um, and if you do have a silicone cookie, like silicone baking sheet, I would definite, definitely recommend using it because it spaces out the cookies really well. Um, and it's just so much easier to wash and the cookies come off immediately so you do not have to spray the pan. But if you do not have silicone baking sheet, you can just use parchment paper. Okay, so as you can tell, it kind of got stuck so I just used the butter knife. But be careful with butter knives because I cut almost cut my finger off <laughs> using a butter knife. Don't ask me why because I have no idea or how. I don't know how I did that, but anyways nobody asked for story time so I just finished one of it so now that I finished cutting out all the dough I could now there's a huge chunk left and by this point it started getting a little bit sticky um so you want to just press it down as much as you can and try and get it pretty flat but not incredibly flat you still want the cookies to be pretty thick so you just use your hands and pat it down okay so now um, I'm just trying to get the edges good. Okay, so now you're just going to press your cup, like I said, and you can peel the sides a little bit and then use your fingers and just get it up. See? Okay. All right, so now you're just going to repeat that. <laughs> I can only fit two cookies because you still, like I said, you want them to be pretty thick. So, all right. I guess I could do one more. That one ended up being really thin, so I'd recommend just doing two cookies um, out of that dough. Okay, so now you take that dough and just set that aside, 
And so here is our cookies. See, on the baking sheet, there's circles, and they space them out perfectly, so you just set your cookies right there. Now you can take your finger and press it down just to make, like, a tiny, tiny little, like, I don't really know, like a nest, kind of like a nest. Um, and if there, if the end of the cookie kind of cracks, you can just press it back together. But you do not want to make them too thin or else the jelly is going to seep through. So you can press your finger down and lift it up and look at the bottom of it. And if there's a hole, then that means you did it too deep. So you can just use any finger you want. I used my index fingers um, or you could use your thumb. It doesn't really matter. You just have to make sure that you don't press it down so much where there's a hole in the bottom of it. Um, or else, like I said, the jelly will seep through. So, See, it's like a little nest. <laughs> All right, see, I checked the bottom of it just to make sure that there was no hole in the bottom of it. So, see, and the edges keep cracking, but then you can just, since it's, like, fresh dough, you can just squeeze it together. All right. So now we're just going to keep doing these. All right, see, so I just finished them all, and they look really good. So now we're just going to take our Kroger brand strawberry spreadable jelly. <laughs> Um, you can use raspberry jelly if you'd like, but um, I love strawberry jelly much better. So now you just put a tiny bit and press it down just a little bit. See? Just like that. And this part was so much fun for me. I don't know why, but it was so much fun. That one was a little too much jelly, but that's okay. Alright, so yeah, you just pat it down just a little bit and you keep going. Um, so I've only ever made these cookies with strawberry jelly. I, like, if y'all are thinking, I don't know, there might be some people out there thinking that you could just use grape jelly. I think you probably could, but I have never made them like that. I've always made them just with strawberry jelly, so I'm sure they would taste really good, but I love strawberry jelly so much. I love putting strawberry jelly on biscuits. That's my favorite. All right. We're almost done. <laughs> Alright, one last one. Alright, those look so pretty, okay? Those look like so photogenic cookies. Okay, so now we are going to go set those aside. And so if y'all have a toaster with a toaster pan, just put some leftover parchment paper on top of that. Because if you have leftover dough, I would totally recommend doing that. Um, so if you have a little bit leftover dough and you can only make like two or three cookies out of it, just take your toaster pan and put, um, the leftover parchment paper on top of it and make two or three extra cookies. That's what I did. And it worked out so good. It, it's just like a regular pan, only it's miniature. <laughs> okay. So now we're just, so I cut one out and now I'm going to cut another one out and you can only, whenever you're down to the last bit of dough like that, you can only cut one cookie at a time. So, all right. But again, you want to make them as thick as possible because I made these once and I made them a little bit too thin and, um, the jelly like seeped through and it was not jelly cookies. <laughs> so I had leftover dough. So I just roll it up in a ball and I just pressed it down. And that worked too. So, see? So you just press your thumbs into them. Since these were smaller, I pressed my thumbs into them because that was perfect size. Okay. It's so satisfying. Can I just tell you, if you make these cookies, it's so satisfying to press your thumb into them or whatever finger you end up using. It's so satisfying. Okay, so now we're just going to put some strawberry jelly in there. If I randomly start talking in Australian accent, I'm really sorry if that bugs y'all because my family hates when I talk like that. I don't know why, but I always talk in an Australian accent. It's like I randomly do it and I don't know how. I don't know how to control it. So, if there are live comments, comment if um, y'all want me to do a video on either how to make biscuits or a video of me baking but in an Australian accent. <laughs> I love doing Australian accents, but there should be a live chat right now, so y'all can just, um, y'all can just comment and tell me if y'all would like to see anything specific, any more baking videos, craft videos, or anything like that, so just comment anytime, because there should be a live chat right now. 
Okay, so now we're just going to put it on the middle rack. I tried to put it at an angle where I could fit both pans, but I couldn't. So I am just going to put the big pan on the middle row and then the smaller pan on the top row. Okay. So if you had a lot of parchment paper extra, I would totally recommend cutting it because it was kind of like touching the burner and so it kind of burned a little bit of the parchment paper, but that's okay. So now you're just going to set a timer for five minutes. It says you're supposed to bake them for 10 minutes, but since I had to put them on different racks, um, you have to do five minutes and then switch them. I was trying to turn off the light and then I was pressing the wrong button. Okay, so now that five minutes is up, just going to check on the cookies. Okay, so obviously they're not done because they're supposed to cook for 10 minutes, but because I had to switch the pans I had to do five minutes at a time so we're just gonna switch them I forgot uh, oven mitt <laughs> and so um, I had to go get another one that's why okay so I got another one so now we're just gonna switch the pans so we're gonna put the little pan on the middle row and then the big pan on the top row but if y'all only made one pan of cookies put them in the middle rack okay so there we go all done <laughs> All right, so now we're going to set a timer for five more minutes. Okay. All right, so five minutes is up, and now let's check on the cookies. They look okay. They still look pretty pale, though, so um, we're just going to test them out. Um, so, I don't know. I don't think they're done because they still look kind of... I don't know. They look kind of pale still. So I don't think those are done. And the jelly did not re look really done. They said the jelly's supposed to be kind of sizzling a little bit. So I don't think they're done. So I put it back in the oven. And we're going to give it probably about like, I don't know, like three more minutes. Yeah. So we're going to come back and check on them in three minutes. All right. So now that three minutes is up, we're going to check on them. They still look pretty pale. So I think I might do a little bit longer. Um, yeah. Yeah, see, I felt it, and it was still kind of gooey on the inside, so we're going to give it probably about, like, two more minutes. So, yeah. All right, so the three minutes, two minutes is up, and now we're going to check on them again. I don't know. They might be, eh. Yeah. So I just set a timer for another two minutes, so we'll see as soon as they're done. <laughs> Alright, so after two minutes is up, I checked on them and they looked really done. See, on this camera angle and the lighting, it looked kind of pale, but they were actually like really light golden. You do not want to overcook these, but you do not want to undercook these. So there was something about the lighting in this part. They look kind of pale. See right there, you can tell that they were kind of golden. You want to make them really golden. So now you're going to let them cool down for five minutes before transferring them to a cooling rack. Okay, so yeah, five minutes. <laughs> All right, so it's five minutes later. I got a rack. <laughs> and so now I'm going to grab like a spatula and get the cookies onto the rack. So in this part, I was trying to find a really good... Um, spatula. Okay, so now I grabbed the little pan. Okay, so now I'm trying, you have to be really careful because see, like it kind of cracked a little bit, so you have to be pretty careful with these. And if you're a little bit worried about them um, cracking like this, you can just let them cool down completely because they're still kind of not really completely cooled off and the only reason why I'm putting these on the cooling rack is because this is completely optional but I'm gonna put on powdered sugar because it's so good with powdered sugar but this is totally optional if y'all do not want to put on powdered sugar you can just leave them in the pan until they're completely cooled off because but if you do want to put powdered sugar on them let them cool off halfway and move them to a cooling rack to put the powdered sugar on them because the pan is still pretty warm and if you put the powdered sugar on the cookies while they're still in the pan um the sugar is going to kind of melt the powdered sugar is going to melt a little bit and it's just going to be kind of like syrupy so you want to put them on a cooling rack 
Okay, so in this part, I was trying to carefully, carefully move them to the rack because they were still pretty soft. Um, and the jelly did expand a lot. They were not this big whenever I put them, whenever I put the jelly in them, but that's okay. All right, see, that's a lot of jelly. Oh, my brother um, snook or sneaked um, one of the cookies, and he said they were really good. He took the broken one. <laughs> you couldn't really see it because of the angle, but my brother took one, so. All right. So now I'm going to uh, let them cool off for about five more minutes. So, um, yeah, I'm going to let them cool off for five more minutes. And, yeah, I'll see you all in five minutes. Okay. All right, so it is five minutes later, and they are completely cooled off. Like, these cool off pretty quickly. So, there's the powdered sugar that I'm using. It's a huge bag that we got from Costco, and now I just have this sifter. We have a smaller sifter, but I couldn't find it, so that's why it's such a big sifter. Um, but, yeah. Okay, so now we are just going to put the powdered sugar in the sifter, and we're just going to sift a tiny bit of powdered sugar. Okay, so see, you can do like a light dust. I like to lightly dust them. I don't like to do like a lot. Okay, so now, um, but again, this is totally optional. You don't have to put on powdered sugar if you don't want to. I left a couple cookies that did not have powdered sugar on them because my family likes them just regular, but I love powdered sugar on these. So anyways, so now here's our finished product. There's one with powdered sugar and one without powdered sugar, and they look so good. All right, well, that's it. Okay, well, that's the end of this video. I really hope y'all enjoyed this video. Um, sorry that I'm doing the outro upstairs. It's because my brother was watching TV, and he couldn't really hear me that well because the TV was pretty loud. So anyways, I really hope y'all enjoyed this video. I really hope that the cookies turn out really well for y'all. Um, and make sure to give it a big thumbs up if you like it. And don't forget to click the subscribe button if you haven't already. And don't forget to click the gray bell right next to the subscribe button so you're notified every time I post. And yeah, I'll see y'all next time. Bye.